Have any of your social media accounts been hacked before? Or maybe your mail? If you've ever experienced either one of these, then you indeed must have had a hard time. However, compared to what the top activities in the hacking chain look like, losing a social media account or mail is quite minuscule. Over time, hackers have also posed major threats to national security, thereby earning themselves spots on the list of the FBI's most wanted. In today's video, I will be talking about how the FBI caught history's most wanted hackers. Who are they? And where are they now? Let's find out. Number 7. Kevin Mitnick Kevin Mitnick is one of the oldest and most famous hackers in the world. During Mitnick's teenage years, many companies were just starting to go digital. The hacker often targeted major companies such as IBM, Motorola, and Nokia. By 1985, Mitnick was already branded as the world's most famous hacker. Although he was eventually caught by the FBI, it took them several years to find him. After spending time in prison, Mitnick turned to the good side and became a private cybersecurity consultant. He later started and registered a firm that sells hacking tools. The target audience was mainly state-owned corporations, promising them full exclusivity and security. However, the issue raised a bit of controversy. While Mitnick's intention can help to reduce threats from harmful groups, it also creates an avenue for the government to pry into the lives of ordinary individuals. Number 6. Eric Taylor Known as Cosmo the God among certain people, Eric Taylor was a force to be reckoned with in the hacking community. His hacking career began when he was only 12 years old. Cosmo first discovered the concept while playing an Xbox game against an opponent online who knocked him offline mid-match, causing him to forfeit the game. After learning that the trick used on him was pretty easy, the youngster quickly picked it up and then went on to learn other things. Taking this into consideration, it is easy to see that Cosmo was indeed telling the truth when he said that he didn't get into hacking for the money, but for the adventure and thrill of it. After finding other people like himself on the internet, Taylor decided to work with them to mark and retrieve user data from websites such as Amazon, Apple, AT&T, PayPal, AOL, and Netflix, even though the companies never came out to speak about this. Taylor and his folks later went on to prank the police by sending them signals of violent crimes. Picking up these signals, the police would then head for the given addresses, but would find nothing. Another thing the hacker got himself involved in was stealing celebrities' personal data. Some of them include Tiger Woods, the legendary golf player, John Brennan, a former director of the CIA, Michelle Obama, former first lady of the United States, and Kim Kardashian, American socialite, model, media personality, and businesswoman. Three years into his online criminal career, Cosmo the God was arrested and charged with multiple felonies. After his arrest, the young man turned a new leaf, and today, now in his mid-twenties, Eric, who was formerly known as Cosmo the God, has dropped his pseudonym and began working as a cybersecurity consultant, whose job is to protect companies from hacker attacks. Number 5. Martin Shkreli Martin Shkreli goes by the handle Pharma Bro in America. The hacker founded the pharmaceutical company, obtained the manufacturing license for the antiparasitic drug Daraprim, and then went ahead to increase the cost of drugs against HIV by more than 5,000%. He also lied to his investors about how he was managing two large money funds. The longtime law eventually caught up with Shkreli, and he was sentenced to seven years in prison. The court also seized his tax assets and property, which happened to include the only copy of one of the rap group Wu-Tang Clan's records and a rare painting by Picasso. Number 4. La Cosa Nostra The La Cosa Nostra is one of the high-profile cases of the FBI. This is because it took the FBI one day to capture 130 members of the largest mafia group in the world known as La Cosa Nostra. Although the media presents mafia organizations in the noblest manners possible, the harsh reality is that they are known for carrying out robbery operations, murders, extortion, kidnapping, and other violent crimes. In the case of La Cosa Nostra, about 500 FBI agents combined with more than 200 law enforcement officers were employed to carry out the operation. The operation began at 11 a.m., causing the FBI to cart over 100 criminals away. Among the ranks of criminals who were taken into FBI custody were a significant number of seasoned hackers. In an attempt to evolve with the times, La Cosa Nostra employed hackers who were using phishing, social engineering attacks, and SIM swapping as well as sending malware to victims with the goal of breaking into their bank accounts and stealing their money. The FBI operation lasted for a whole day, and after that was a high-profile trial that took place almost immediately. The trial was said to have caused a great tremor in the Mafia's activities on America's East Coast. Number 3. Commander X Commander X, whose real name is Christopher Doyon, 
was introduced to a life of fending for himself at an early age after his mother died, leaving him the care of his abusive father. Unable to bear the abuse, Doyon eventually left home in 1978. Growing up, Doyon joined a group of like-minded people, and together they founded People Liberation Front (PLF). Years later, however, he was sentenced to 12 years in the Pendleton Correctional Facility in Pendleton, Indiana. Shortly after, he was caught selling hits of acid to an undercover narcotics agent at a Grateful Dead concert in Indiana. He was later released in 1997. In 2010, Doyon moved to Santa Cruz in California and joined a local movement known as Peace Camp. Later that year, he took part in a Distributed Denial of Service, or DDoS, attack, which was an attack against the computer servers in Santa Cruz County. The attack caused the website of the county to go offline. A little over a year later, Doyon was indicted on charges relating to the Santa Cruz County incident. He was arrested, but was released on a $35,000 bond after a week. Instead of returning to court for a status conference in 2012, he moved to Canada, and later to Mexico. While it is unclear when Commander X joined Anonymous, the decentralized international activist and hacktivist collective known for its acts of internet activism, it became clear that he had joined their ranks when he started the move to nuke the websites of PayPal, MasterCard, and Visa. At the time, the companies had blocked people from using their services so they could support WikiLeaks. This move caused the FBI to come to the realization of the power of the anonymous group, and also cost the aforementioned companies millions of dollars. Doyon was eventually arrested by Mexican immigration authorities on June 11, 2021, and was deported to the United States on the same day. On June 12, 2021, he was arrested by the FBI and appeared in federal court three days later. Christopher was indicted for conspiracy to cause intentional damage to a protected computer, two counts of intentional damage to a protected computer, and failure to appear after the pre-trial release. Number 2. Hector Monsegur Another member of the anonymous community, and like Commander X, Monsegur was one who also had humble beginnings. As a child, he lived with his grandmother in an impoverished neighborhood in New York. Monsegur soon got tired of that life and decided that he was going to start taking care of his family. He began to steal credit card data, which helped him take care of bills and also helped him to live a much better life. When Monsegur joined the anonymous community, he began to carry out tasks that weren't as harmless anymore. He hacked into the website of the Tunisian Prime Minister and uploaded a letter showing support for an activity that was against the law at the time. After that, Monsegur began to attack implementations of the government that the people felt were against them. The last straw for Monsegur was hacking into the website of one of the FBI's branches. This act attracted many agents to his apartment just the following day. After figuring out that the hacker was responsible for over a thousand hacker attacks, Monsegur was sentenced to 124 years in prison. Seeing as it was impossible to live out his sentence, Monsegur decided to collaborate with the FBI to avoid his sentence. Of the many things he did for the FBI, acting as an informant is also one of them. During the third year of his collaboration, it was recorded that Monsegur helped the US government, American military, and NASA to prevent over 300 cyber attacks. Number 1. Marcus Hutchins Marcus Hutchins, aka the man who saved the internet, was one of the leading hackers who managed to avoid the long arm of the law for quite some time. He was, however, eventually caught after he pulled down a virus that was destroying the data of hundreds of thousands of users. Already, this sounds like a feat that no ordinary hacker can pull off, but Hutchins did. As a child, it was said that Hutchins' parents prevented him from playing his favorite Counter-Strike or Call of Duty games, so he took to mastering hacking as some form of revenge. Hutchins began to show great interest in the area of information technology from his early days. He took to studying computer studies, but soon got bored after he realized how restricting that was. He decided that he was going to research and discover a lot of other things on his own. Hutchins got his first computer at the age of 13 and did the most unusual thing. He disassembled and reassembled the computer, making his own modifications. The following year, after figuring out where Internet Explorer stored its encryption keys, Hutchins created the first software whose function was to steal the passwords of Internet users. About two years later, Hutchins dropped out of school. Three years after that, he started working on the dark net, and soon enough, he became one of the leading developers of software that was designed to steal the banking data of a large number of people. Hutchins was soon arrested and wasted no time in confessing to his crimes. His trial lasted for many years, with Hutchins' mind already made up about spending the rest of his life in jail. 
Things, however, took a different turn when the judge cleared the hacktivist of all the charges against him. His reason was that Hutchins had earlier saved the world from a very destructive virus. Apparently, this act of goodwill could not be compared to all of his crimes put together. What do you think about this? Do you think that these hackers deserve some accolades as well? Or do you think they deserve to face the wrath of the law to the fullest extent? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below.